the channel's more lights. Anyway, so yes, uh, this is Cal Cats, the Cal Catster. And they released over the past couple weeks the, uh, uh, the short tracks online on YouTube for free. So I watched all of them. Uh, yeah, so uh, they, uh, they're they double dipping. They probably release a box set of Blu ray of short tracks because they didn't put all of them on the um, Discovery Season 2 DVD box set. They, they, did, they only put a few of them on there. Like Runaway and. and the one with the planet, the uh, series planet, and I think the girl with the stars on there. Yeah. So, saw those before. Anyway, um, uh, yeah. Um, so, I, I watched them. Um, I know Red Letter Media has long since seen them. And uh, they didn't like them. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, well, there was a Silly Trek one. There was a Trouble with Edward. Yeah, that was a silly trip. Um, yeah, so... Eh. Uh, um, yeah, there was there was controversy like a year ago. When they did them. And, oh, the females in it are too powerful. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Uh, it was, apparently, they didn't get the idea of the trouble with Edward, that he's actually a douche. He's supposed to be a douche. And, uh, although the... The Trekkies would argue of that one. It's about a guy who apparently allegedly engineered the Tribbles to be pregnant, which doesn't make sense. So he could eat them. So they could feed them to the alien planet. Uh, in the Silly Trek version, the Starship Locations version, which is a storybook from, uh, that was recently put online, by, uh, recently put on Amazon, but there were earlier versions of it before, so it was, it was known out there in the uh, Trek fan film community. Uh, it was an episode where Worf did essentially the same thing. Goes down to the planet and he's acting all jerky and he he's a TNG period. And he eats Tribbles. It was a parody of the scene from the the, uh, the, uh, the Trouble Tribbles. Also, also the 96th version was a parody again of you know, the 30th anniversary of Star Trek. Uh, in which they did the same thing. Except in this case it was Odo uh, not wanting to eat Tribbles. This version is a 40th, a 50th anniversary, a little bit afterward, and somebody tries to eat Tribbles. Um, yeah, uh, it's ridiculous, it's stupid, but uh, but the guy is supposed to be a, an incompetent jerk. Of course, he wouldn't be on the ship. Uh, there, there were there were all kinds of uh, the science ship. It was looked like the Ciliosaurus too. The science ship looked like the Cerritos and the Ciliosaurus. Of course, it did. It looked like the ship from Silly Trap, Starship Locations, uh, one of the ships anyway. Uh, of course it did. Um, yeah, because uh, yeah. I didn't write it, but someone I know, I know must have written it, because they, they knew details about the ship and, and the planet and everything like that. So, yeah, it was even in the Rackett sector. So there you go. It's right out of Silly Trek. Uh, but yeah, um, but uh, but yeah. Um, so I didn't mind that one because they were stealing some of my stuff. So I was okay, fine. Uh, he's supposed to be jerk, so what? I don't know. Uh, the other one was Q&A. Uh, it was the one where Spock and number one, Spock is introduced, and, and he really does not look anything like Leonard Nimoy. Ethan Peck did a fairly good job being Spock, but he, he doesn't look anything like Nimoy. I mean, Zachary Quinto looked a little bit more like Nimoy, but then again, Chris Pine didn't look anything like William Shatner either. So I don't know how that works. And Chekhov was too young, he, by ten years or more, because they set everything five-year mission way earlier than it should have been. So in 2364 to 2369, not 2360, that's 2063. Chekhov would have been in grade school. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, but that didn't have anything to do with this. And then there was a Q&A. That's a Spock one. So uh, that was the one in the turbo lift. And they keep implying that they've got this chemistry going on. They kind of don't have, really. They're both computer brains. She doesn't look much like Miguel Barrett. She looks more like, uh, who played number one in the, in, in, in the cage. She looks more like Deanna Troy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Edward basically looks like Jim Bufkin from the location. But it's not. No. He wouldn't act like that. No. <laughs> He'd be a Klingon or something. 
Uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah, um, yeah, he wouldn't act like that. Uh, the, um, the turbo lift, and there's a rock climber lady that pops down and rescues him from the turbo lift, you know. The troubles go all over the ship, and the treble one, but uh, the rock climbing one, the Enterprise. Uh, what was the other? There was another one. Um, uh, um, the first, what was that? Wasn't the first duty, what was it called? It was like the first duty. It was a disaster test thing. Yeah, what the hell was the name of that? <laughs> Let me see. Um, Ask Not. I looked it up. <laughs> Ask Not uh, was a Kobayashi Maru test type of thing. Command test type of thing. Uh, pretty obvious from the get-go. Okay, like the, the captain comes in and he's got the hood on and he's all like, oh, you know, it's, it's going to be a setup. But, yeah, it's to teach a wince and the ship. Uh, yeah, in a, in a crisis situation on, on the um, ship, uh, thinks there's an attack going on, and, and, and uh, she she's about to blast the captain with a phaser. <laughs> Very silly trick, like too. Would have done the same thing. Sort of a twist on the Wesley disaster test that he took for the Academy in Coming of Age, season one. Yeah, similar to that. Also similar to the test in the first duty, which they failed yeah, after after Locarno's incident. So anyway, um, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, they, they, they would have made decent. You could have done something with each one and made it part of an episode. Uh, and uh, yeah, they're they're not. Uh, we see where they were getting the idea for what would become Lord X from. Like it was like fifteen minute little short things. Uh, the treble thing was silly, but then again, very much like a Lower Decks episode, actually. Uh, but yeah, um, and I commented on Trek Core that there were a couple of scenes as my mother walked in on Lower Decks episode 3 and on some of Discovery, uh, <laughs> wondering why the ladies' heads, the heads all looked weird. And what, what was she on? You know, girl. In the story, because the cartoon girl is like hyper. Uh, also, there was a the funny one was a Discovery season one when I was watching it. Then they, she came in. I was watching the watching the. They introduced Tyler Vock and the Section Thirty One people and all that. She goes, "Now he's either the spy or the red herring." <laughs> I said, "Yeah, probably." It was, it was really, really obvious. He's projecting. <laughs> He was a spy. He was a Klingon spy. It, it, it altered to be a human. Yeah. <laughs> I wondered why that lady was hyper too. Anyway, so yeah. Uh, um, that's funny. Um, it's more of a classic trick. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, that's my little review of the short treks. Uh, what I thought of them. Uh, Children of Mars is silly track again. Very much like uh, Lord X. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, assume they're of no relation to the like, characters of Lord X because it would be five years later and they, they would, wouldn't be children again. That wouldn't make sense. Uh, and they have blue jeans on and red shirts. But anyway, so they fight each other because they're catty. <laughs> No, although the other two episodes had the themes of strong commanding women or commanding officers or, or strong commanding of again number one, uh, central to those number one stories, captain central to other stories, and the lady on the ship, the ensign um, being central to that. Uh, I don't know what those people's beef was about because they're just playing off of modern storytelling they're basically staying saying okay this is what star trek has always been a reflection of our time so even the new one it might be hyperkinetic and frantic and might be kind of weird in places doesn't really match should be hopeful vision of the future but it isn't quite uh it's a reflection of the time uh, the 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 original tos was during the vietnam era, and it had to be they couldn't while well, they were on NBC, they couldn't 
talk about Vietnam, obviously. So they did episodes where they went to planets where they would encounter aliens that were kind of like them. You know, like the Klingons or the Romulans. The Klingons were clearly the Red Chinese at that time. And they evolved into the sort of the Russians in Star Trek VI. Um, but they were Chinese. Uh, the Romulans were Russians as well. Yeah. The Ferengi were, were uh, TNG were Jewish. And a number and capitalist as well, uh, both. Um, Armin Shimmerman, who was the first Ferengi, and then went on to play Quark. Uh, he, uh, uh, he said at conventions that he modeled his character after a politician Ross Perot at the time, 90, 1993 politician. His character. Uh, the others weren't like that. His, his character Quark is Ross Perot. Literally, and of course that joke would go over everyone's head now, 25 years later. 27 years later, when it's like, Ross Perot was that. He was a politician, a capitalist with the years. Yeah. Had a lot of rules for everything. It was pretty much Quark. <laughs> and his brother, was, his brother was a toady. And he later becomes the, the Negus of the Ferengi. Uh, so yeah, it's it kind of fun how, like, uh, and Morn was Norm from Cheers, which is why they couldn't ever have him talk. The actor was at another convention. He's all, yeah, my character can't say anything because copyright issues. Well, that's what he said, but he, he was joking. Uh, that, 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 that would have just, it's the, it's the old vaudeville idea, the way back to early comedy, in which you have like a speaking person off camera, or you have a person that never says anything on camera. And they were doing on a shoot. So he was, he was yeah, basically that character. He was, I'm in the background, but I never actually say anything. <laughs> yeah, so uh, a lot of comedy tropes. There. There's been a lot of humor in Star Trek. There, are some people are complaining about Lower Decks because it's it's too comical and weird and frantic. I'm not sure what the target audience is really because all the jokes are like my generations, like X generation jokes, like people born between 1965 and 1985. How are they get? Yeah, I don't know. yeah. It's the target audience is my generations. Although, interestingly enough, uh, Trek Yard people like Sailor V, who's a little older, Trek Gore, uh, she, he doesn't like it. So that's too much. I can't take it. <laughs> but uh, the other guy kind of likes it. The founder vaguely likes it. But yeah, um, yeah it's, uh, it, it'll get better. As, as I commented, if Lower Decks is given a second season, it'll be better than the first season. The, the first season of TNG was a mess. The very second episode out of the gate was Code of Honor. I'm sure everybody knows what that is. It's that really awful reverse racism episode where they go to that weird Zulu planet where they want to have Yar fight in combat with poison glove gauntlets on her hands. What the? What are you guys thinking? Why? What? This is space. Wouldn't they have had? Wouldn't have warp drive at all? It, it, it doesn't make sense. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, there was a lot of that. Uh, the naked, naked now. I think it was the second one. That was the one where they ripped off the naked time, but we didn't know who the characters were. It worked in the naked time classic trick because you knew who the characters were. They'd been around for a few episodes. You knew who they were, but here you just met them. Like to have them all get drunk on the ship, like lower decks. Um, <laughs> very similar. Um, yeah, so they're following the first season tip. They're also kind of ripping off the Orville a little bit, but the Orville is a Next Generation spoof, so it's synergy. A season two of the Orville was actually dramatic. There wasn't as many comedy jokes. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, Lower Decks, uh, and I'm talking about, well, Short Tracks, too. You know, Short Tracks are, they are, uh, there's no movie review, obviously, because there's, uh, yeah, we can't show footage from it. But also, uh, there's no movie review because there's a pandemic and you can't actually go out to a movie review. So, uh, yeah, um, yeah, they're going to do a season three of Discovery. You know, we tailored the uh, latest Starship Locations book that's on Amazon now. You can go get it. Uh, the, uh, the Ancient Aliens spoofy book uh, set in that time period before Discovery is rescued from the 33rd century, so <laughs> enjoy that one.
Um, yeah, so... Before it's risky. So it takes place before. Uh, yeah, it involves the Fantoma crew and uh, new captain Vita Kala and uh, his crew on this weird planet that worships what they were like a hundred years earlier during the TNG period, which is hilarious. Mark's cards approved. The one before that from this year was the was the form parody of, of some Discovery people and 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 all of Starship Star Trek Picard, uh, done as a, a spoof uh, Fant Fant Fontana meets Clerk, um, in which uh, they all the two generations meet, even though they're really only 2396, 2399. They're close by, so they're not generations, but they meet. Two crews meet, let's say. Um, yeah, that was a form parody of Picard. The second half is that's literally what it is. You read it and you're like, oh, wait a minute, he's just, yeah, he's spoofing Picard. It's, <laughs> he's totally spoofing Picard. There's an artifact in it, there's Romulans in it, there's, there's the synth fire thing, but I set it up so it's a synth virus. I go back and I do that. Oh, yeah, that, that's something else. I thought I might mention no, that was in Silly Crack. Uh, the, the Midnight Edge people found out about that and they put it on their website today. Um, uh, saying like oh, we're gonna do a new Star Trek it's gonna be about a space virus or virus thing or something. No, that's Starship Locations. It's a spoof. It's set in set in our time slash twenty three ninety six. It's not what they're gonna do on the next Star Trek. That was a parody put up online as a fan thing. All the names and story was changed. It's not Star Trek anymore, it's a spoof of it, so it's funny. Uh, no, that's not the next Star Trek movie. That's not what it was about. The uh, the Tarantino movie would have been about um, uh, would have been about the gangster planet, Crossville City on the Edge of Forever. That was his idea. He was going to do yeah the Ioceans and City on the Edge of Forever because it was kind of similar. He's going to do the Ioceans. Uh, there's a, there's a piece of it appears in uh, Fontana meets Clark when they go to the Iocean planet uh, in that one. Yeah, so uh, that's the, the mob planet. So, yeah, a piece of Tarantino's story is there. It's a, his script idea. So. The other one was Pike meeting, or Kirk meeting his father, which was retooled into the nepotisma chapter of the Fontana meets Clerks when Riker meets his deceased son in the other timeline. He shows up from the other timeline and says, We can defeat the space virus. Because I know how to do it, because I got transported back to the other timeline, so I have the cure for it. To go defeat the evil orange menace. See, that's how you do, <laughs> with blonde hair, that's how you do the, uh, <laughs> that's how you do a spoof of modern times. You sort of make fun of something that's going on political now, but you make it in such a way that it's different enough that the, you know, this guy was already established. Mendrick Cottle was his name. It's Space president. It was established last season on Starship locations, so now he's doing his thing now. It totally makes sense. It may sound weird and convoluted, but it totally makes sense. He's basically spoofing Trump. Uh, but, but yeah, um, but not in the sense that we need to worry about the character just doing it. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Fontana, the ship, is named after DC Fontana, who passed away in Star Trek. Uh, Nog is in it, because in the Silly Trek universe, Nog, well, Nog in this version is spoof, but not only that, but in Riker's son as well, uh, were, were Pickerly in the Silly Track version, because they had to change the names, because uh, we didn't want to avoid copyright uh, issues. So change the names, it's a parody. And uh, yeah, Nog, Nog lives in this other universe, because in the Silly Track realm, you don't die. Uh, if your character was encountered by Cillians, we're like Q, uh, you, a copy of you appears in reality, in the story. <laughs> Do we even have to parody ourselves? Like my character's renamed Hazel in this time. Mark's car's character's renamed Holter, the Fox Hunter, and, uh, <laughs> and stuff like that. But yes, he would never hunt the foxes. He's more of a furry. Oh my! This shirt right here. Oh my! It's a Fanime shirt. It's a fox. I think it's supposed to be a spoof of either 
cross between Star Fox and, and uh, Zootopia. I think it's supposed to be the Fox and Zootopia. It's just like a fan of papers. It's supposed to be a spoof. And uh, people see the round the star here and they think it's some kind of cop thing. They have to tell them, even in the lucky store. How can it be a cop thing? It's an animated fox. It's not. <laughs> it's an animated fox. It's, yeah, it's a furry cop. It's from Zootopia. Then they, then they go, oh, Disney World. Yeah, um, so, yeah, Starship locations, yeah, I could go on about that, but it's not. Yeah, so I didn't mind the short treks, they, they were alright, they uh, addressed things. I just didn't think there was much controversy with them, I mean, like, yeah, the character of Edward in Trouble with Edward, it's a jerk, he's a douche. It's like, and, and, and I don't buy the idea that he created the Tribbles as we know them, that doesn't, makes sense but, but but he's in trouble and she gets in trouble at the end for letting him out so uh, well then there's that really gross commercial where they feed the children the troubles which is right out of silly right like literally they read the rpg silly track game the mother is basically Worf, Worf's mom she feeds the kid to tr troubles just literally silly track so some of those guys that write that bad robot and secret hideout went to Pine Hill with us apparently. Played that game. And we're like, yeah, let's do that later on. If we ever get to be in charge of Star Trek, let's do a triple one where they try to eat triples. Gross. It's probably just that they thought of the same thing to be gross, but maybe they didn't. They didn't. Anyway, so that's my uh, short treks review. I didn't. Um, the girl who saw the stars made the stars. Yeah, uh, that was on the other one. So, um, and yeah, um, the double dipping. They're probably gonna release all the short treks on DVD, Blu-ray, and DVD, and then we'll have them again. To go and buy them for like twenty dollars or something. I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, as far as I know, the connection still exists, as far as I know. The season 3 is still on, but the pandemic slowed all those productions down. They didn't show down, slow down the animated Trek, uh, Lower Decks, 10 episodes, because they were actually in production like six months ago. And they're in a studio that they have them made in a studio and then sent here. So they were, yeah, so they were already done. So they just had to put the voice actors in there. So that's why they were released first. And some of them fans, some of those guys, the naysayers will say like, no, what about the other thing, the Orville? The Orville's not canceled either. I was just, they haven't done any filming because of the And then they'll say, no, but other TV shows are happening all the time. Uh, well, they were probably in the pipe. Yeah, there's, there's, unless they can do the shows with, with people green screening to each other, which would be weird. Yeah. Probably have to have another Adamicon convention pretty soon. <laughs> but anyway, for now, that was, um, yeah, so, and I've seen the trailer for The Batman. Uh, well, the half finished Batman. They've only done about 15% of the movie on that one, because again, the pandemic started. Uh, and, uh, uh, and they did include the cameo, so, in the trailer. Why did you put that in? It's probably not even going to be in the movie. He doesn't do anything. He's just there. You know, look for the cameo. Um, <laughs> it's not Affleck. I tell you, it's not. It's not. It's a Patterson. Patterson is playing a Batman. And also, what's weird is why Kevin Smith. I looked it up everywhere, trying to find it. Why he did not actually ever do a Fat Man on Batman or Fat Man Beyond. That's what the show's called. Fat Man Beyond. Uh, talking about um, the Harley Quinn movie. The Harley Quinn and the. Anticipation of Harley Quinn, Bird's Prey. He talked about it online, he talked about it on Twitter, he talked about it on Smodcast, but he did not do a Fat Man Beyond discussing the movie. The only thing I can figure is, because he commented on some of the stuff he didn't like, he decided not to. Because some of it he didn't like, some of it he did. Uh, he offhandedly mentioned it on one of the other podcasts in April, 
but he really didn't even go over any details. So he clearly didn't like it that much. Or I just wanted to say, oh yeah, I liked it, but I didn't, because I had to give out my two cents to DC, because I like DC. Um, but he did talk about the Batman. So if you want to see his podcast, we'll talk about Batman. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, yeah, just recently. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, yeah, I didn't mind the Harley Quinn movie, it was alright. <laughs> the ending was a little phonetic, but then again, so was the Wonder Woman in the original one, the ending was a little weird. Uh, uh, the only drawback to the Harley Quinn movie is that, um, some of the fight scenes were weird. They had to slow some of them down because they weren't very good. They sped them up in some places, some of them were fight choreographed by somebody that knew what they were doing. And some of them weren't. And you can kind of tell they went back later and reshot them, like a third of it. Which was the case with Suicide Squad as well. And also, <laughs> speaking of other versions of things, the Snyder Cut is doing out in 2021 on HBO. The Snyder Cut of, of the uh, Justice League. Uh, they've apparently reshot the 30 minutes of it, but he changed because he left, came back. Uh, I'm uh, yeah, so I knew a little bit about that from the conventions last last uh, summer. Not this one past, but the summer before. There was a Snyder Cut in over. I saw some pictures. Yeah, so it is out. It is coming, but uh, they have to finish it up, and it's all just CGing things. I don't. I, I don't know from the trailer whether. It, it's gonna work necessarily because it's like it's just gonna be darker and more brooding. <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, the, the Snyder Cut. It's gonna be on HBO, I guess. So I won't be able to see it until it comes out on Blu-ray and DVD or whatever. But, which it most likely will. Anyway, so yeah, um, anyway, that's it. Star Trek.